The painting behind me here is called Tanu. Emily Carr painted it in 1913, shortly after she'd come back to British Columbia from France, where she'd been learning about Fauvism and Post-Impressionism. And you can see when you look at this painting in this gallery, there are other pictures in this gallery that are made before her trip to France that are not nearly so bold in terms of their coloration. You can see there are all sorts of pinks and purples in the sky here. Also the paint handling is much looser and brushier. She's really putting a lot more emotion into her touch in this painting. And it's a very charged site as well, Tanu. The villages that Carr was looking at uh, had been emptied of their human inhabitants by the horrifying smallpox and tuber tuberculosis epidemics that had swept through British Columbia's Aboriginal communities in the 1800s and principally in the 1860s. In the decade before Carr was born, almost half of the indigenous inhabitants of British Columbia were killed in these epidemics. And the further up the coast you went, the more harrowing the losses were. In some of the communities in Haida Gwaii, where this painting was made, 90% or 95% of the inhabitants of villages were lost. And often there were not people uh, surviving to bury the dead. So when Carr writes in her writings of finding, you know, what she called Indian bones in the parlance of her day, lying around in the bushes when she was uh, exploring, She's not being dramatic, she's simply recording what she experienced, which had an enormous impact on her. Um, Tanu had been a very mighty village indeed and very populous, and now, of course, and you can still visit these village sites today, there is a very profound feeling of loss, and she captures this so beautifully in this work. It's one of the only pictures we have of Emily Carr uh, at work is taken in the logs, she's down in the logs in Tanu, this tiny figure, uh, with these massive poles in front of her and this luxuriant growth along the front of the beach. And one can really feel almost the sense of the wind blowing in those grasses and of her uh, remembering her sense of encounter in that day. It's a very vivid record of her experience and therefore one of her most beloved works.